Oh, there you go. It's working now. Maybe it's a different Zoom thing. Cool. Let's just uh, give it a minute. Check that's actually doing something. Cool. And I'll just I'll just drop it into the iGen. I think that's that's fine. I've got the streaming link. Oh yeah. I don't know if that's separate or. <clears throat> All right. I think we are. Yeah. Live. Oh, it's just showing me. Oh no, it's not. It's showing you. Oh, it's showing both of us. Perfect. Yeah. No, sorry. I, <laughs> I'm just looking on the uh, on the phone, and so I was just like, just yeah, I've got up on my laptop as well. I'm trying to <laughs> mute it because it's like doubling up. But cool, we are live, and there's some people jumping in. So yeah, we had a little bit of I don't, I don't know why, but a little bit of um, difficulty for some reason with the the access. So yeah, that, that's all good. Um, you want to try to start it off? <laughs> yeah, and I was, I was actually interested to see if you were gonna if you were gonna start talking like it's in one of your groups. <laughs> I just wanted to see like if you were just sort of you know going off on one like without thinking too much. Oh, but yeah, thanks for, thanks, for joining us, <laughs> yeah so th thanks for joining us, everyone. It's basically, today you know we haven't really spoken to Luke in a while. Um, I've spoken to him, but a lot of people might not know what he's been getting up to. You know, what is he? What did twenty twenty one sort of have in store for him? Well, what did he do in that year? Uh, what's his future plans? You know, obviously people know who he is in the Amazon space. Uh, well, most people will if they've been in the space long enough. Obviously, he has his own Facebook group, IGN Entrepreneur, um, all around. You know, not just Amazon, but business and Amazon. And uh, he's built like quite a successful team now around that whole brand. Because uh, you know, back in the day, I remember we went to, I just bring out some more memories, <laughs> when, uh, you know, he, I wouldn't say he had started off, but he was in the big, sort of more beginning to intermediate stage of his Amazon journey. We had some quite fun times out, like uh, at my ex-girlfriend's place in London, <laughs> we went that meet, that meet up and he, I ended up passing out and he basically couldn't find the room. That was quite a fun, well, for me, it's hilarious, but for him, it was horrible probably. And then uh, we had a fun couple of, uh, Amazon on a lava charge of, uh, well, I think one, wasn't it? The event up in Lincoln. <clears throat> that was a bit of a crazy night. And then Luke ended up crashing in my room because he was going to go home, was it? You were going to go home or something? Yeah, uh, I was meant to be getting the train back and I didn't end up. <laughs> yeah, and then <laughs> and ended up crashing your room. Up. And I basically, I had to get up at like six in the, the next morning for this bus or coach. And I basically said, Luke, do whatever and just check out, <laughs> basically. Just left him in the room because we went to bed at like, four maybe and yeah it's and very late and, and that i just thought i just thought i had some uh you know light history on the things that were going on obviously you guys any anyone that's joined us and wants to ask some questions about anything go ahead go again it's gonna be all a replay if anyone jumps in and wants to watch later go ahead and do that too so yeah so we're just gonna start off really simply what have you been up to luke and i know you, we had this, we had this chat a second ago and he said what did I do in 2021? <laughs> so, this might be yeah. a struggling uh, question, but I'm sure we can try to get something out of him. Yeah, it's a bit of it's a bit of a weird one. Like I'm trying to go back now. So 2021 started for me really. I just I just got back from Gran Canaria where I am now. Um, I've just been back for like a couple of weeks uh, or three weeks maybe over Christmas. The plan was to then head back to Gran Canaria pretty quickly after, but. Um, with COVID and all um, getting tight and restrictions, Spain didn't actually let anyone back in. Uh, they had this date, but they kept pushing back. And eventually I was just like, you know what, um, I, I, I give up. So I had another look around and pretty much the only country, one of the only countries in the world that were letting people in was Mexico. So right at the start of February, I ended up going to uh, Mexico where I, I kind of like, yeah, I kind of um, stepped off the gas a bit. Like I went super hard in Gran Canaria for around two and a half months where um, about half halfway through the year, I, I put together the, the Amazon um, training program that we, we run. Uh, and then like I launched a webinar and then I didn't really take anyone else in. I had like a bit of a webinar launch and then just left it there. And then when I went to Grand Canaria, I pushed really hard on like getting basically all the like the systems and that you know, involved in terms of like getting people in and like the delivery side of things and really building that all out. And so then early, early 2021, I kind of, I kind of just like, yeah, kind of 
reaps where I'd sowed a bit, maybe a bit too early because I, I took on a couple of staff and not really their fault or anything. It was more my lack of kind of preparation. So it wasn't really at the point where I was ready to do that. I, I stepped away um, <clears throat> from the business a lot during those months and then ended up going back to the UK just before the cricket season and um, then you know took on um, another staff member so there's a few of us in, in iGen now and, and really the goal behind that brand is um, facilitating stakeholder legacy creation and that's a bit of like a what does that really mean and like one of the so for example my my North Star or mission statement is like around this idea of being the architect of catalyst of people's lives and it's really the thing about like creating um, resources and opportunities and sort of education around like yeah just there's just those things like sort of personal and business development really which then benefits um everyone involved so that, that's really it and so that's kind of a reason why i mentioned that is because that's kind of where 21's been going towards because you know i i basically systemized my amazon business as luke mentioned but most of that really uh, a lot of that happened in 2020 uh, and so i i then tightened up the iGen brand sort of like so it could kind of run without me and pretty much got that down throughout 2021 um and then it's like okay well where do i want to go and so i've had quite a lot of like experiment and then around yeah august time um stumbled into nfts and a bit like amazon i, I enjoy the I enjoy the fact that you can make money from it. You can actually make quite a bit more than, than for Amazon, I'd say, but it's, it's a bit more risky. Um, but at the same time, it's like, it's still that thing where it's not that fulfilling to me. Like you're not really creating something. It's a bit of like, a, you know, it's just flipping things really. And pretty quickly, I was like looking at, okay, well, how can I, you know, leverage an NFT technology? Because I think it's pretty cool into the agent entrepreneur brand. And that's where kind of 2021 really ended. It's like this kind of not really sure where, and that's going to go. And now we're really good working hard on a, uh, an NFT project that basically acts as like, so agent, an agent entrepreneur NFT, it acts as like one to provide utility for the holders linked to what I mentioned around like the goal of the brand, but then also to act as almost like a, it's almost like a share in a company, whereas, you know, like you, you bang on the brand um, and if the brand performs any ideas, the value can go up. So 2021 was a bit of a, a mix in a lot of those, um, yeah, like kind of tightening up uh, or keeping ticking over the Amazon business. It's funny, I keep referring back to, I think it was a question Sean Gilbert asked me, a few other people, but if for some reason it sticks out when Sean asked me, he's like, where do you want the Amazon business to be in five years time? It was like a year and a half ago. I said, like, just exactly where it is now. You know, like, if I can maintain that, um, I'm be more than happy without spending a lot of time on it. And that's really kind of more what I achieved before 2021. But I, I maintain that. And then with the Idle Entrepreneur brand bringing in staff to kind of really build strong foundations to then, like, actually, because for me, you, you kind of just scale, scale, scale. It's like, if you just increase your revenue, that's your sole focus. Um, you're gonna you're building a skyscraper of weak foundations really and so for me it's like okay what are the opportunities out there and i tried a sort of joint venture um in terms of nft training side of things which didn't go super well but i learned a lot there um and that's still something that's ongoing in terms of things there uh, but a lot of stuff's in like nft space but not so much on like um buying and selling more so my focus now is on like okay how do we leverage nft technology to further stride towards the ultimate my goal and the brand's goal um there and so that's kind of what 2020 <laughs> but it's a bit yeah it's a bit of a jumble um but yeah yeah the one thing i think is quite funny is um when people think of nfts because this is not actually and we're not like this is not done to talk about nfts by the way just in case people are thinking oh we're talking about that this is obviously we're trying to, you know, what you're doing is is trying to incorporate it in some way, because the way I see it is like, you know, people think of it like a monkey picture, a cat picture, and like, oh, you know, why is it all this, it's going to crumble? But in terms of like utility, you can have, I think of, this is a good one, like, I probably can find better examples, but imagine if you have, a, you have a season ticket for, I don't know, like Leicester City when they won that premiership, premiership title, yeah? You've got a season ticket, but you don't really utilise it, you bought it and it's an NFT, 
And then you you really wish you could go to all these games, but you can't. And then the demand for that season ticket is, starts to skyrocket because people obviously want to go and watch Leicester play at home as much as they can. And obviously, I don't know how it obviously works with away tickets, but you could then in theory go, okay, you know what? I'm not even using it. I can actually sell that on now. Not only, and you could do that with gym memberships and stuff like that. You know, you could go ahead and take, you can, you can um, even do like rented ones because I have some entities that are, <clears throat> like a rented version so you get it back every week and you can basically if you don't go to the gym for a week you list it and you basically rent it out for a week that person can then go with that nft and go to the gym i mean it's you know it's pretty simple but it just like adds another layer on where it does that but where no layer exists you, know, you buy something and then that thing's kind of worthless now unless you actually you know like you bought a gym membership and you can't do anything with it it's like okay i've got to go now and if i don't then that's that but now there's another layer in there, which is just, you know, just adding a little bit of diversity to what actually can be done. So but most people think it's just a scam or whatever they think of it. In terms of business, it can be implemented really well if you can find the right, you know, like application to kind of merge. And yeah, so obviously that's why Luke is talking about it. Uh, and, you know, just in case people thought we were aiming <laughs> the discussions today towards that. <coughs> so I know you're really like big on teams and building and outsourcing and all that kind of thing when did you have like that realization that that was what you needed to do and why was that something that you kind of felt strongly about doing because obviously with a lot of that's just breaking down for simply amazon a lot of people do most of it themselves they might have a prep center uh but everything else done themselves they might have or they might have one or two vas but like for sean he does pretty much all his own prep he does outsource it just a couple of local people and all that kind of thing but, you know, most of the stuff's done day to day, obviously, probably by a lot of Amazon owners. Um, but you are kind of quite the opposite. You, How many hours do you reckon you say you do a week on Amazon? Like four max? Or, you know, I'm guessing it's not always the same. But uh, It's probably like, probably on average about an hour a week. And that's mainly when I have to do something like in the viewer accounts and it's bulk of things. Or if there's something, yeah, it, it, like I have to manage, like make a decision on something but really it's like very very little like it, it it does just run without me now um yeah so like how many so in terms of team what size kind of teams do you have uh many amazon business i think there's six i think that were well, five five full-time and one part-time and then the igen uh that... igen <coughs> uh, Putting you on the spot, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, there's, there's a bit of like there's some there's some crossover. There's like four core core members. I gen. Yeah. So do you find it like I I I've started you know I, I'm very slow at at that sort of fate like shifting my like slowly outsourcing for example. I'm very slow. I, I took a lot, lot longer. And I knew I was going to do it all, but I always take a little longer just because I do for some reason. And obviously, I've done a lot of that now. But you know, you you kind of did it. I wouldn't say like in a week but you did it quite quickly from knowing that that was the the route you wanted to, to take or it, it feels like that anyway uh like you know i just remember that one day it was i think actually i remember one one real life world event we went to matt webley thing in london is it uh the free event and i was talking about co i believe this is a conversation you can correct me if i'm wrong talking about oh i do some coaching i think so i said to you i do some coaching or something similar to that or i, I get some commission from something and you went Oh, yeah, I need to start actually doing some of that. Or some, there was a comment like some similar to that, and I and to me that was like the other day. <laughs> you know, I, I know it was probably about maybe two and a half years ago, but and obviously I thought you know I was getting there, and obviously I feel like I'm taking things a lot kind of slower in terms of I haven't added those layers in yet properly. Not that I won't, um, but you know you've done it quite quickly. Is there like a, a sort of underlying drive that made you do? it like that or did it did it naturally just kind of happen uh or yeah did you always have a, in the back of your mind i want to get this done because i want to focus on you know maybe like higher level business or, or whatever your thoughts were it's not it's a bit of both like a lot of the stuff for me is it's just like you kind of got to know two things it's like you got to know where you're at and where you're going i guess in, in a sense and you don't need to but for me that's the way i kind of look at things it's like, well, what's the the goal in the sense of 
especially like with Amazon, it's like, do I want to be doing the prep, doing the sourcing, doing the purchasing for years to come? And the answer for me is that is no. So it's like, well, what do I need to do? It's like, if I want to have the Amazon business, it's like, what are the things I need to do to get to that stage? And with Amazon, I think it's quite easy relatively because you've got people who have been and done it. You can go and like ask them what they have done. And that's basically what you know the training that I put together was. It's like, how can I make it as hard as possible for people to not make the business work? And in the Amazon arbitrage, it's like that's relatively easy. Like compared to, for example, now NFT project wise, there's yeah, there's, there's people who have done it, but it's a lot newer and there's a lot more moving parts and variables and things where it's like less clearer. And as you know, the more you kind of innovate the definition, like the, the path is less clear. And to me, that's a def- difficult thing. Like if you if you can clearly see, like if you can break down what are the tasks you need to do. And you can just go and do it. That that's what makes it easy for me. The the difficult thing is, it's like when you sit down to, you know, to work, and you've maybe got a goal. Like the first thing is like, well, what's the kind of goal? And that's different, you know. But say you've got a rough idea of where you want to go. So for me, that's like that north star statement and the architects of capitalist people's lives. And then you go like, well, even if you don't have that, you're just like, I want to quit my job. You know, that that could be it. I want to quit my job. Okay. Well, what does that look like financially? Do you need like maybe to be sure you have like a year's salary saved up and then you're replacing your monthly income. So, you know, let's say you earn three grand a month or whatever, you have 36K saved up and you're earning 3K a month from the Amazon business. <clears throat> you can work back from that and you can then like break down these things. And when you have those tasks and like that, that's when it's easy in my opinion. The difficult thing is like sitting down and going, what do I need to do? And like you have that kind of internal resistance where, whatever reason you're not doing that thing you have like these things which when you reflect on it to me it's kind of obvious but the actual like the hard thing is like what is stopping me from doing that and actually like giving yourself time to be in that and just like journal on it and go okay what are those things and like maybe what's the top three things and then okay what are the actions i can take on them and just like yeah really breaking it down so for me going back to the question with the amazon thing I wasn't really thinking consciously like that, but it was just like, um, for me, there wasn't like any specific goals more because for me, it was more about like, yeah, kind of really building that sort of four hour work week type thing where I just wanted to like, yeah, it, it wasn't crystal clear because I just come out. Well, I started when I was in university. So for me, a lot of it was just like, I, I want to be doing something to make money. It's just like this natural thing. But then it was just like, okay, I'm building up. But it, it was just really that kind of case of, I don't enjoy like the sourcing. Even like, I never really even got into the sourcing. Like for me, I always say in Amazon, there's two different things, the sourcing and the purchasing. You know, the purchasing to me is like, a lot of it's the ability to actually analyze a deal as opposed to sourcing, which to me, yeah, there's some of that, but the more important thing with sourcing or the way I distinguish it is like the ability to find the deals. So, you know, the way to actually go and like get those deals to the point they need to be analyzed. And so I never really did much of that. I did a lot of like kind of deal sheets and different things. And I, uh, I kind of then got my VAs to figure out a lot of like the, how they're going to actually find those deals. What I got really good at was the actual analysis because that's what you need to be able to do to make purchasing decisions. That's what's important. And eventually I delegated that. But the first step was like, okay, well, how are we going to find these deals? How are we going to do it? And this is what I mean by breaking it down. You know, you have like the, the monetary goal and like, what are the things that you, you need? Like, what are the, the, you know, what's the, the revenue you need? What's the, all these kind of things, like the, the purchasing you need. And you can start breaking these things down and just, yeah. And it's, it's easier said than done. I'm not, I'm not saying it's, it's easy, but, uh, ultimately the one thing i'll say on this is it's like yeah we just by nature really really overestimate like i think what we can do as humans within a short period of time like a few days or a week or something even even a, a day um and we really underestimate what we can do over months and years it's really hard to actually look at that time horizon and and the biggest thing is just doing you know you mentioned it like there's 
there's these things you know deep down that are going to move your business along. If that's what you want, you might be happy where it's at. But like there's things deep down that you know and it's like, it's quite easy to kind of do the mundane day-to-day thing. I say mundane, not necessarily mundane, but like the repetitive day-to-day things. But this is, a, this is where like going back to the, the team thing, it's like in the scaling. For me, it was like, what are the things that are actually going to help me to grow? Like, what are those things? And then those are the tough things because it's new, but like identifying those and like prioritizing them. Because if you just like do the same things day in, day out, okay, you could argue that your sourcing ability is going to improve, you know, your analysis ability, that, that's true. But like the actual key thing is identifying what are the tasks that are going to help you to grow. For example, like moving to a prep center or whatever your solution is there, like hiring staff um, or for example, like, yeah, getting VAs or whatever it is. Maybe it's like trying a new piece of software, like just trying out a new repricer and building out the systems. All these kind of things apply in Amazon and in other businesses. I just think it's a bit easier in, in Amazon. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like how did you, you know, obviously when you're getting, taking on building a team and what kind of thing um how do you go about obviously a lot of people don't want to pay extra expenses right i mean that's natural they don't want to pay out more than they have to um obviously with more vas you can give up a little bit more profit and out and get back a bit more of your time that's kind of a that's the plan isn't it um but did you did you kind of in terms of anyone that might be sort of interested did you let's say get to x amount of profit per month and go okay you know what half of that i can now use to my new va because I'm, let's, let's just say i'm making a thousand pound a month net profit all expenses covered and everything like that uh, as of now and let's say you're giving yourself a grand i don't know make up a number did you go okay right now i've got enough you know i'm making a thousand pound a month that's now use half of that every month to take on a va and did you have any structure like that in terms of obviously making sure that you could could afford it almost to, to scale without pushing it too far? Yes and no. I didn't really think about it from that point of view. Like I know there's people who, which is fine, you really all of this stuff comes down to personal preference. There's no one route um, and everyone's kind of golden within Amazon. It's different. Like I, I kind of did, but for me, it was more like cash flow planning um, in the sense of like what are the, the wages when can i start expecting the deals and then like you know if i spend money on those deals like how much do i need to spend to actually make the money back so um uh, probably better to illustrate it but i'll try um maybe if, if people are watching if they don't understand let me know and i can i can kind of illustrate it maybe it's like a screen share but you know let's say you're paying let's say you take a va on and let's just say i'm, I'm not going to give a realistic thing i'm just going to give like an easy example to illustrate Let's just say you're paying them hundred pounds a month and then you kind of, or no, let's say hundred pounds a week. It's easier to do like, cause it's in weeks really. Um, months aren't good cause it's not even number of weeks. They're annoying. <laughs> um, so let's say hundred pounds a week and you're probably going to have like, okay, you've got like two weeks, let's say to train the VA and they're not going to be like necessarily producing any deals. Then you've got like, let's say two weeks where, okay, they, they've then bought the deals, but then they've got to like get arrived and get prepped in, in Amazon. And then maybe like four weeks to sort of sell, let's say on average, maybe even if you're going to be ambitious two weeks and then like two weeks to then get your cash back to you. It's like, first of all, like, have you got the money to cover your purchasing in those periods plus the VA salary for those weeks? So if it's like, you say six weeks, a uh, hundred pounds to 600 pounds, then like whatever you're spending on stock, what your plan is for that VA to find. So to cover their wages. So for example, it's like, if, if you're, um, you know, let's just say easy example that your growth, cause you want to cover their wages. So it's like gross here. It's variable. So if your gross margin, let's say is 10%, for example. So to cover a hundred pounds, in their wage you would need to sell a thousand pounds so you'd need to buy enough stock to sell a thousand pounds now a lot of people roughly if they generate a thousand pounds in revenue it's about uh, 500 pounds of stock to generate that so you then need to say well i need to spend 500 pounds on so my be able to find 500 pounds on stock generate a thousand pounds in revenue to cover that but just to cover their wage so i'm not saying this is an accurate i'm just trying to say like that's how i think about it like 
one, I need to actually cover from a cash flow point of view, but two, then the VA actually needs to exceed, you know, like they need to find more in that. They need to one, find more to actually cover their, their wage, but two, to actually make it worthwhile. Like I don't just want to break even on their wage. I want them to, you know, like, cause it's, it's still like energy to actually manage that and like invest the energy into that. So that, that's where you can start breaking it down and, and planning really around that. So that's pretty much what I did. Like I looked at it from, and this is a nice thing with Amazon is you can go and speak to more experienced sellers and find out these figures. And that's why I did a lot with, with Thomas. Um, he was further, yeah, I think it was Thomas is more further ahead of me at the time in terms of like, what is he achieving? And I spoke to a couple other people, like what are they achieving in terms of like being a VAT registered, for example, that's going to change as well. Like what, what margins, what's like, um, sales to purchase ratios, all these kind of things I could then work it out and build from there. So to answer your question, it wasn't like, oh, I'm going to, you know, like take half and reinvest it. It was just like, this is, you know, this is where I'm at cash flow wise. Um, and this is where I want to, you know, get to. And it's like VA one has got to make sense from a numbers point of view, but then also VAs, I think where people get it wrong from like sourcing point of view, it's not like, this is a big thing I say, you know, it's like a magic bullet one, you know, they're, they're probably going to be trained on some sourcing tips and stuff, but they're still going to need resources. But two, you know, you still need to be, you're still going to be the one I advise anyway, the one that's doing the purchasing and making this purchasing decision. People still have to be able to do that. So that's the sort of way I looked at it. And um, yeah, I think that answers the question. Yeah, no, cool. I mean, it's just interesting because I know that every, pretty much everyone has completely you know, different views on that kind of thing. Um, some people love getting their hands dirty and doing all the prep. Like, at, you know, I wrote, at one point I did enjoy doing the prep because uh, it was kind of like a workout, you know. I was like, yeah, I'm working out <laughs> for the day, you know. I, I saw it was like going to, yeah, part, until my back actually got absolutely shredded, as in destroy, not like hench. <laughs> and to the point I, I was like if I carry even like another month I was like at some you know my back's gonna have some I'm gonna pull it to the point where it's never gonna be right again <clears throat> and it and it's still not 100% it's like now and then you know once every couple of months I just feel like oh and I know that's from doing boxes with Amazon because before that I literally would have zero problems yeah I was younger I guess 10 years ago for example so you know that could be obviously real but yeah that, that, that does come actual like real you know, like I, I have to stop this. Um, and that could be something similar, you know, like maybe you have a family as well with responsibilities and, or maybe you're having like a new child or a first child and you're going to be like, I can't do, I, I have no time. And, you know, like, so for me, I, I had to, luckily it came at like the perfect time because COVID was around, uh, just started as in perfect time, like making it sound like it's amazing. You know, I love COVID, but you know, it, it, in terms of like profits, cause I was doing all my prep myself, you know, I was doing, I don't know, like the very first month that like, COVID hit was like 88 grand sales and there was like zero prep for, you know, obviously my, 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 in terms of my costs, it was UPS fees that come out automatically anyway. And I don't know, 400 quid on boxes and, and bits and like a couple of softwares. And it was pretty much it. It was like, and then I, you know, and obviously that didn't just happen for one month. It was multiple. And then at some point, uh, luckily my back was destroyed and I had to, and I was doing, and I had like plenty of profits from, I could pay for like two years of prep with the profits from the last, I think I did it from like, you know, March, April, May, like four months or something, four to five months. I was like, you know what, that's, I'm so comfortable now in terms of what I've made because I've basically had no overhead. So it's pretty much pure profit pretty like for most of it that I felt like I'm secure enough almost at that point. Uh, and so it did happen at the right time. And, you know, again, like sometimes I like, to do these kind of things as well as that I make a decision like I'm going to move to Lithuania so I moved to Lithuania obviously I didn't know how long I was going to live here but when he, when I did that I have no choice <laughs> but but to get my ass into gear and you know and sometimes like a lot of us are very easily sort of like fall just fall into that kind of rinse and repeat uh you know like, like go to work get up go to work get up go to work and, and that's a big thing and it's like I you know, you, some some people do need that kind of like that that thing to make them change. Uh, for me, sometimes it is just doing something when I know it feels like the right time. But a lot of people might go, ah, "Yeah, I could," but and they just carry on and you know carry on. I think that's the thing is it's trying to really 
the big thing I'd say is like, it's really like asking, it's like being honest with yourself. Like there's nothing wrong if you, if you're happy, like, you know, you're making the money you want to make, you're doing the sourcing, you're doing the purchasing, doing the prep and you're happy doing that. That's fine. I'm not saying that's wrong, but it's, it's not wrong or right. The thing is, it's like really being honest with yourself and like asking the question, like, what do I want? And sitting with that and going like, if there is a nagging thing where you're like, you know, I, I want this, whatever it is. And like, this is an action to get there. And you're avoiding that. Like, that's, I think the, the key. And, you know, like it's, this is the thing. It didn't, it didn't happen like overnight for me. It's like, it took a lot of time. And like, this there's always, there's always things like the, the biggest thing for me with the, the staff, like an amazing thing you can do is just literally record, like just, just print I, I did it digitally but i found it's easier if you have it like physically printed out just get a spreadsheet and i literally just had like all the the hour 15 past half an hour quarter two and i just literally write in every 15 minutes what i'm doing and then go back at the end of the week review it and go like you know do i want to be doing this thing maybe yes cool maybe i could be doing more of it and like how much time could i free it by like delegating or just eliminating it like why am i doing this thing can i delegate it and there's there's so many things where it's just like when you do the task it's easier for you to do it it might take you twice the time to delegate like when you have a va like a general sort of admin type va it's great because you can just like go quick loom here's me doing a task you can do it from now on um maybe check it it depends what it is but it's like so easy to delegate but it is more effort like it's it's easy to just do it yourself and get it done but then the next time it's the same but for the long run mm. just small things it's like it's it's amazing like this is the things you can do and it's like these small things that like i wanted to do and i wasn't doing until i did and then it's a great feeling when you do because it's that thing you know um and i think that's the the big thing so i'm saying like okay well one there's the awareness of the ability to actually do that like a big thing at the moment in NFT space, like VAs aren't really a thing. And this is why I've actually just signed like a three month contract with a big, um, a big sort of NFT alpha group, Metaverse HQ. And we're going to be providing NFT VAs for their clients. Um, yeah, so that, that's pretty cool. But my point is, it's like when you have the awareness and it's something you want to do, then that's when you get to choose, you get to choose if you're going to dive into that, like, overwhelm resistance or whatever and actually like what do i want to do it and decide if you want to do it or you get to choose to put it off and like ignore all that nagging part of you um does that make sense yeah i, I think it does like for me the way that i you know i i'm very slow like i have two vas and they are both amazon and then at some point i was like i'll oh, sod that uh then i went joanna like one of my like but she was doing my social media, like so she wasn't just doing Amazon. I guess it was kind of doing a bit of other things. So it was a bit easier to transition. I said, from now on, you're doing NFT stuff. Because <laughs> like, uh, you know, I just thought having a, a, a VA for that was just like as a sidekick almost. That's the way I see it, like a companion. And now I'm probably thinking into like Metaverse HQ and not Metaverse HQ, but there's, there's some of these like um, NFT projects that have those kind of names like companions and sidekicks. So I'm probably putting that out there. But, uh, and I found it great, um, but I wouldn't be able to do that if I didn't have VAs already, or even if I was just delegating and splitting the tasks a little bit, like there's a lot of crossovers uh, that I found with a lot of businesses anyway. Uh, and so like, you know, definitely with admin things, yeah, it might be a slightly different topic, but I was able to do that with, with that, with, with VAs. And if I had no VAs as well, I probably would barely, I probably wouldn't have even got into the NFT stuff. Uh, and, that, and that in my eyes is like, the way I see it is that maybe it wasn't like um, laziness, not, you know, it's not particularly laziness, not getting VAs, but if you know, that's really where you should be getting, because, you know, I would say, are you going to do it forever? You're going to be, you're going to be that guy packing the boxes or do, sourcing for you know, theory forever, unless you've got like something else that you're kind of, you have running, maybe you have multiple businesses, fine, maybe not so bad. Um, but I'm like, you know, I don't want to be doing this forever. No. Will it last forever? I have no idea. Um, and now that I've actually been able to kind of, you know, have VAs outsourcing it, got prep center, all that kind of thing, living abroad, when an opportunity has presented itself and I've re it's really sort of piqued my interest and I thought, you know what, the like for me, the transition, it could be anything, to be honest, but the transition to NFTs was 
effortless because to me it's basically saying on Amazon I see it exactly the same it's, it's how I see it um, and but I see the potential to be like a hundred thousand times greater just because it's so early um, in terms of where it could go you know with Amazon well I probably got in sort of at the middle part I guess uh, not at the beginning not at the end I mean who knows where the end is uh, but if I had if I never had VAs and stuff, I, I would, wouldn't even be able to entertain that opportunity uh, because I would, or, or maybe I would like look at it, you know, and I'd be interested in it, but I wouldn't be able to do it. And so it's almost like getting prepared. <clears throat> so you're in a position, <clears throat> sorry, to be able to, to, you know, be able to do something. It's like, I, I used to see it as like, if I can outsource, this is how I used to think a little bit before I even had like my uh, scope outside of the Amazon side of things. I was like, you know what, what if I like suddenly had a child like in with coming in nine months? Like if I was doing my prayer, if I was doing this and I was doing that, if I had it all outsourced and that, I'd be like, yeah, no problem. Like easy. Like I don't need to, I can spend, I I, I can I, I can use that energy and that time to focus on that. And I'm not like, oh God, oh my God, like, how, what am I going to do? I've got to go and train VAs now and outsource and get a prep center and then it's going to all be done in the next six months, you know, all that kind of thing. It's like just, just getting, instead of being like, no, not now. Maybe next month. Maybe next month. Of course, you don't want to do things if it's going to overextend you in terms of price, uh, sorry, cost and stuff. You know, obviously be sensible as well. Um, and don't like, you know, go bust because you literally hire five VAs and get a prep sent all in the first month. Um, but yeah, like I found that being a bit proactive in that, even if it's not, you don't have to be like instant, is always good because then you're ready and also your mind's a little bit more open to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. And if we, you know, if we're all in business as well, they're probably yes there are people that stay in the same business forever there are of course but you know with this kind of current world we're in the you know and the way i see it as well like with amazon being kind of like a more you know entry level and then, yeah of course you can make it complex and do tens of millions a year on amazon you put anything you, you can make you can sell lollipops <laughs> to make and do, you know do hundreds of millions of turnover if you want That's obviously the best the biggest companies in the world um but like i always see it as a good stepping stone to then level up and, and improve and i find if you don't kind of at least entertain and have a bit of a plan for that kind of outsourcing you're just going to get stuck and before you know it five years will go by and you you know you'll be like okay yeah you know and it, it just sort of, it'll almost turn into a job and and with amazon at one point it kind of felt like that it was like you know not that it felt like working it didn't feel like going to work to a job and working but it wasn't that feeling but it was still like oh it wasn't yeah it was still like okay see him again tomorrow you know it was almost like that re repetition falling into that kind of work style i guess which i didn't like um and so then definitely get, getting vas and outsourcing even though it's not as big as your team or anything it's just being able to open my mind up a lot more to the bigger things you know opportunities that might come around rather than closing myself off because obviously you want to be ready for anything that comes up that's just how i see it so I, I didn't know if I wanted yeah. to add anything, but no, 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 not really. I, I, yeah, I, I think the cool. big thing to sort of say takeaways is like just ask people the question, like what do they they want? Um, and it's like you know, it, it, this this may trigger some people. That's fine. Like, um, but a big thing I see, or at least some people, like for example, people a lot of like things I get from people is just like because I'm young and don't really have any responsibilities, which I, I'm well aware of. So I could be well off. But the big thing I see is like people that's like, oh, it's all right for you, Luke, type attitude. And, and that's fine. If people want to have that, that's cool. But the question I really ask people is like, well, what do they want? You know, like they're in their situation with whatever they've got and they can sort of, you know, say like, oh, well, I've got this, I've got that, I've got whatever. And it's like, we have a, um, a, uh, a value in the, in the agile entrepreneur business where it's like solutions not problems and it's really this you know this kind of well what is you know it's making decisions at the end of the day it's like yes okay there's this 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 thing going on and it's like well, what do i want to do about it and maybe the answer is nothing you know but it's like even that's a decision you're deciding that you know you're happy with the way that it is currently and there's nothing wrong with that or you decide like okay this is what i want to go and do given what's going on in your your life respectively it's like you get to decide that and you can't control external things that happen yes 
things can happen. Yes, you can try. And, you know, I saw a good post by Sophie did and she like got a new newborn and she's like, you know, you can't have this super well-structured morning routine when you've got a, a young baby. It's like, but you can still have your priorities that you, you focus on. You can still, you know, go and think of creative solutions. Like, is there someone that can um, help you in, in the mornings? Like, can you have like a carpool, for example? I, I don't know. I'm just saying there's there's this there's a big difference in me, for example, like kind of when you like notice you like I just think I'm trying to catch myself, like when I'm noticing like like yeah, kind of problems and kind of like, okay, well, what can I do about that? Just I'm trying to think of a good sort of example, but it's really it's a big shift in um mindset for me anyway. And um yeah, I think it's just kind of really the big thing I'd say is like having people just and it's something maybe because I've just been going on this journey a lot is like what do I what do I want like what do you want because everyone's journey is different and got different sort of situations and goals and it's just like reflecting on that and then the next steps become clear from that I'd say but um, I'm conscious of time and a few people have got questions so do you want to did you want to dive into some of those in the in the comments where, where can you see questions I know some people are just acknowledging things but then if you can see any but Andre uh, says uh, that no I can't see anything Andre said, uh, maybe it's just you. I know on the phone sometimes it doesn't necessarily pop up. If you maybe tap it or oh, whatever. Oh, okay. I've, I've clicked view post and now it's popped up with me. Yeah. Like Andre said that they're still doing the prep themselves because they feel like a good advantage in terms of seasonality deals. Any thoughts on that? Like, I think it kind of pretty much covers what we said. Like, you can go into the technical stuff and like the strategy around it and considerations. But at the end of the day, Andre, it's like, whatever you want to do like some of the considerations are well are you accounting for like your own you know money is one side of things but are you accounting for your time like the energy like the you know the ability to be geographically independent like there's all these things like what do you want um for me like not having deliveries arriving at random times with massive like just disruption just pain in the ass to be honest like just prep itself was just annoying like it's just yeah i just didn't want to do it but in terms of seasonality deals specifically, I don't know necessarily what you mean in terms of advantage. If you mean like you can get stuff out faster, like go and do an RA and get it out in terms of when it's seasonal, if that's what you mean, then maybe, yeah, there is an advantage, but I don't I don't really have anything to add on to that, Andre. Um, then if you do, Luke. Yeah, the only thing I'd say is like, like, I used to do like a lot of OA. Then the profits, sorry, uh, RA. Profits would be great, great. But it's like, if you, start, if you do OA for 600 days in a row, you know, you start to go, am I just going to keep doing this? You know, if you have six Q4s and you keep, and for three months, you basically have no sleep and no nothing, there's going to come a time where you're like, you know what? Yes, I'm going to have to give up some of that profit by shifting to this, but it, there comes a time when it's, you burnt through that and but you'll have, that, and that's the feeling you'll get. And, you, and I've had the, feel, the opposite feeling of like, I am going, getting up at 5 a.m. every morning, going out, a whole day RA staying over in a hotel doing massive road trips and I loved it and it was I could not wait to do it you know I could love it honestly and then it got to a point where I was like and I, I can't I'm just not doing that anymore like I could do one day a week Matt you know like the, it's problem, just, the problem with that as well is it's like it. the actual sorry I just out of it like the Don't. one the one thing just to consider with like RA is like the actual going and buying stuff like yeah it's great fun but then you've actually got to you know prep it deal with all the organization like get all the receipts into some sort of organized you know so you've got the data you've got your actual like you can actually work out your own internal like performance but then also for reporting like legal obligations i'm not saying there's uh, you know there's no reason why you can't do that but i think the one thing i used to see quite a bit with ra especially like this youtube thing which i think was a bit toxic a bit misleading it's where like people go oh i just made 400 pounds in 20 minutes it's like no you didn't but <laughs> you know, you've, you've driven there, you're going to drive back and you, okay, you spend 20 minutes scanning and buying stuff, but then you've also got to like do everything else around that. And it's like, I'm not being like critiquing RA because that happens across all, you know, business and marketing stuff. It's, it's eye catching and it does happen. But I'm just saying, you know, the only thing I'd say is RA is just consider all the other, the other stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, a quick question from Sean was, I'll, I'll just, I'll reply to my bit first. So why would this? The um oh god, it's hang on. Sean loves to post about a thousand comments, so it's hard to find the exact I think one. The first one was the, the first one was about yeah, the house. Like house. 
uh, be interesting to see what your opinion is on things like houses as Luke Degan isn't interested in houses. And actually, sure, I'll correct you. I'm not, I'm not, <laughs> not interested, but my thoughts are I will buy a house when I literally have 250 grand and I go and buy the whole house. If I if I don't get to that, I don't want to like put down a 12 grand more, you know, deposit and have a I don't know how how many years you have. Like my thoughts are literally it's almost like a, a pressure I put on myself. It's like, I need, I don't want to do it the traditional, which is a bit sad as well, like, but I don't want to rely on doing it. And by not doing that, it puts pressure on me to create results. And I believe I can do it. <clears throat> and sometimes I know that I need that pressure sometimes. And so I'm like, I'm going to buy a house in cash rather than having that security of going, oh, when I'm 65, I'll have a house paid off and I'll have a pension. It's just some sort of wet, weird mental thing I have. Like, and, and that would probably mean I'll be 65 with no house and nothing can and I'll be poor. But obviously that's an, something that I accept and I have accepted forever. And I've always had that, that mindset. Um, so that's, so yeah, if I had, you know, if I make loads of money and I have 300 grand in my back pocket, I'd just go and buy a house. Yeah, I will. But so that is, so I, I will buy houses. I won't just run. Go on, sorry. Um, no, just, I just sort of comment. So like, first of all, as a follow-up, uh, Yami says, but technically they did make four hundred pounds then if they use prep sins for purchasing it. I'm like, well, no, I'm talking about retail arbitrage. If they use the prep sins, it have to then deliver it to the prep center. And even then, there's still other things to do. You, you could still just get magically sold. You've got to manage your inventory. You've got to reprice. You've got to deal with any like, you know, you can have complaints. You can have listings going down. You can have there's this, you know, this all these kind of things prep aside. Like that's one thing. So that's the first thing is like, there's plenty more that goes into it. And then even if you, you know, you, yeah, there's, there's a lot more that goes into it for one. Like I was saying, I'm not, I'm not doubting the fact that potentially they made 400 pounds. And also like, I'm making a large sweeping statement here, not talking about every, uh, no, you know, I can't talk about everyone specifically, but I'm saying for one, like there's no way they made 400 pounds in 20 minutes because they didn't, they, they've got to go and do other things. You, your goods don't just like magically get sold. But the great thing with NFTs is that, they can you can like you can just buy and instantly sell it and i do that um but my point is here that doesn't happen there's a lot of steps in between even with nft you still got to um manage that data and have like things internally for like performance and like for reporting it's just a bit less all over the place like with ra you've got to manage all these things like even taking the receipts like recording all that or like uploading receipts and getting all these things and then the other thing is like well the other the thing is and again this is like there's no reason why they can't make the 400 but what i see a lot of is it's like well they're basing that on prices that one are potentially optimistic um because you know like just because of the price doesn't mean necessarily sell there you know you've got to have sales volume uh, but two is like well by the time they actually then send it in we all done arbitrage we know that price can dip and so i'm not i'm not saying that as much because that's more of a case of people actually being able to analyze products and actually buy things that are then going to sell at the price that you you know expected to sort of sell it but i just thought i'd make that distinguishing thing there is it's like matter of factly they have not made 400 pounds in 20 minutes because it's not sold um there's a follow-up there but yeah but look at it did you systemize online purchase and send straight to home center approach sense of va to the price i'm not too sure what you're asking because yes i've systemized everything like i have vas that buy the stuff they send it to, it goes to fulfillment center prep center the VAs do the, one of my VAs do, does a repricing, one of them does replenishables, one of them does customer service, like it's literally all systemized. So I'm not too sure what you're getting at here. Like, um, look, the point, because I'm, <laughs> I'm conscious of time here. Yeah. The point is like, at the end of the day, I'm talking about retail arbitrage and the fact that I'm not seeing anything wrong with it. I'm saying it's a personal decision. Like I, <laughs> all I'm saying is like, actually the driving around and buying stuff can be super fun but that's one part of it like it's not the complete picture that's all i'm saying there um and then on the houses stuff it's a completely different topic but on mr gilbert's point on <laughs> houses and that also answers the question of what would i call him to me it's mr gilbert mr gilbert's question on uh houses uh, to me like from an investment point of view is like if i had a bunch of money and i like, wanted to invest in something would it be part of my portfolio at the moment, no. One, because I don't like my limited knowledge of the market just seems like, you know, things tend to have cycles and right now it's more expensive than normal. And 
a lot of principal seems to be this thing of like buying when other people are fearful and selling other people are greedy. Um, and right now doesn't seem to be a great time, but also just with houses, it's like, there's a lot going on. And I feel like there's quite a bit of things, maybe, maybe I'm, um, maybe it's easier than I think, but I think there's quite a bit of stuff there to learn. It's like an opportunity cost. Like I could put that energy into other things potentially that, um, for example, like right now, I'm just focusing on like building this NFT project. If this NFT project goes well, realistically, there probably will be a pot of wealth that like I'm looking to invest. Like a lot of it has been just kind of putting into crypto, putting in stocks and shares, ISIS and doing this stuff. But as I generate more wealth, I spend more time facilitating, you know, how I, how I manage that. Um, so that's kind of my thoughts. Sean maybe doesn't answer the question too well, but really it's just like for now, um, no, but it's not like I think it's good or bad. I just don't have enough information on it. Did you, uh, I don't think you've answered this, but when, uh, at what point did you take a step back and systematize your business? Uh, uh, sorry, at what point did you take a step back and systematize your business and started delegating somewhat hands-off approach? Um, I think it was about six months in really. No, maybe more, about eight months. Like this was, this was the story that I kind of had, which is kind of crazy. Like I, I meant to hire a couple of VAs and sort of kind of share it with one person actually, you know, Jim, um, Jim then took a step away from that and I just kind of did it and then ended up hiring kind of six backs because I couldn't separate them. And so I just had six sourcing VAs and that's where I created an invite only deal sheet to, I basically charged, um, it was 10 out of 12, but initially like 10 people, 125 pounds a month. So split basically the, the six VAs found deals, um, three, you know, well, all of those deals and say they found 20 deals in a day, 10 would go into one sheet, 10 would go into the other. Um, and then there'd be five people getting deals for one sheet, five for the other, and they just charge 125 pounds each. It's a small like invite only thing, but that meant I could recoup um, pretty much like a, a good amount of those wages which just helped with like cash flow. And the thing was, okay, yes, you could argue increased like kind of competitiveness on the deals, but not as much like for me, it was worthwhile thing for a few people. So I don't know if that answers the question, but yeah, around eight months in, but I don't think there's any, I always kind of like when people ask these kind of questions, I'm like kind of why, because there's no right or wrong time to, to do it. It's just whenever it makes sense for, for you. Um, yeah. I'm not just the timer anymore. Yeah, lost the fees. Is there anything else I miss? We've got like a minute. Mm. I think that was everything, but okay, it's, it wasn't very updating. Uh, so it wasn't very updating, but he, uh, yeah. Was like, Sean was giving us a lot of updates, Mr. Gilbert, <laughs> should I say? Uh, he, he asked about restock limits. I, I think he, uh, you know, you, I wouldn't, I, I don't know if they're going to do it or not. No one really. I, I, pro, I mean, for me, I would say, uh, yeah, I don't know, but it seems like all those issues that caused that have now disappeared because of the demand from COVID. So I think it, it will go in the opposite direction to be fair, probably get phased out. That's how I see. Yeah. So Parkinson dropped in. Hey Thomas. And yeah. Hey to everyone else who's jumped in. I can see some great stuff from like Andy and um, Mo's question there. And, um, a few others. So thank you all. And the last thing I think just Sean was asking also the saying, not so much a question, but he mentioned minimum wage going up, still being cheaper than a prep center. I know you've made a decision, Sean, and you've thought about it, but just for everyone else, you know, that the thing is, it's not all about the cost because the thing is like with a prep center that you are delegating like the management, everything else. If someone gets sick, it's the prep center to sort it out. You know, like the point is if, if your staff gets sick, you need to figure it out. Maybe you need to step in or whatever. Like there's just, you know, it's not just like, what is the cheapest? I would say personally, but it's like the cool thing is when you have a prep center, just energetically like delegating that, but then that's also a negative in a sense that, you know, you have a bit less control. And there's been like a lot of, I would say issues with prep centers in the UK and as an arbitrage wholesale to sort a of space as a whole, at least for my sort of three years of using prep centers um, or so, maybe a bit less, but I've seen quite a few issues cropping up. So there's also that balance there, but we've both got to jump off. We do. Now, Thank you uh, for joining us, everybody. I'm guessing it's from your group and my group. So I'll say thank you for joining me in my group. Well, they're all joining from my group, but you get what I mean. <laughs> uh, yeah, thanks for joining us. Any other questions you've got, you can just uh, copy us into the comments below and we will have a look.
um because we both have to run off but yeah it's been great talking to you Luke. if we, people are from my group and maybe have never had a few quickly do you want to just say how to get hold of you yeah the main thing is i mentioned it briefly but we're going to be launching an nft project for entrepreneurs in yeah it's basically for entrepreneurs so i'll drop a, a discord link um it's basically just built in discord so it's free look, if you're interested in that yeah it's, it's free it's just a platform for communication and essentially the nft project it's like look if the only thing i'd say is if you're at all interested in what i and the I and entrepreneur brand are building then jump in if not then then don't like that's as simple as it is really there's you know there's going to be a paid nft at some point when it launches in late april but there's also going to be the opportunity to like actually get relevant resources for sort of personal development entrepreneurship in there um so yeah that that's it if you want to get hold of me jump in there that's that's where i'm kind of moving the focus i'm not necessarily moving the focus but i'm really starting to like think big about the uh the future and that's one of the things i'm looking to do to increase the amount of people we're reaching um yeah the other platform sounds good cool. yeah so people Thanks want to on, dude. free content for that go to discord um don't have to buy anything as simple as that but yeah no, it's been great talking to you i'm sure everyone's uh enjoyed having a nice catch up because they haven't seen you for a little while maybe i don't know maybe they have <laughs> but if they haven't they have now i don't know <laughs> yeah yeah maybe some new faces maybe not yeah, for a while i know we've done a fair bit of stuff i think this is the first ever like live video i did with with you <laughs> yeah that's right uh, your group, like your group is still public and they're like I remember oh yeah my brother, public, so, my, yeah. my brother was like hi Lee. it's like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> yeah no awesome dude i appreciate right, it i know you've got to jump up so yes. See you later. cheers guys bye bye, bye.